Hello my soccer universe! Now this is the brilliant stuff I want to see from the Champions League. What a great two days we had! And yes, Tuesday was definitely better. I mean, it was. I, I, I would say that Wednesday was a really good Champions League evening with one great game and one good game. But what we had on Tuesday, this was just out of, out of there. I mean, out of this world, Real Madrid against Manchester City. I think there's no doubt that these are the two best teams left standing. And it's a travesty that one of these will have to go out. That's at least how I see it going. Uh, and yeah, I think Arsenal Bayern, probably the third best of the four just by pure quality but also plenty of storylines in there i think between arsenal bayern and uh, psg barcelona yeah probably I'll lean a little bit more psg by arsenal although i think there was some better stuff shown at the arsenal bayern game i was surprised how you know you could see the european experience of bayern in there that really surprised me, especially on the bad form that they have been. But I think for me, the biggest story is almost, we had 18 goals over four games. That's four and a half goals per game. That's already outstanding. And the average, that was a goal average in the Champions League for the entire season, which was below two, has been lifted above three at the moment. So with just four games, that does not happen that easily, believe me. Um, but despite having 18 goals, of the four superstar strikers, arguably four superstar strikers, uh, that we have in these quad quarterfinals. I'm talking here Holland, I'm talking Harry Kane, I'm talking Lewandowski, I'm talking Kylian Mbappe. Only one scored, and that from a penalty, Harry Kane. And I think he was probably the one that had the most impact on the on, on, on the games. Am I now missing Vinny Jr.? Probably I do. On the other side, did he score? No, he didn't. But he was a live wire as, as well. And this is not, I'm only low looking scoring. I think the work rate, especially uh, the impact on the game that like a player like Holland or Vinny Jr. had in the game uh, should not be overlooked. Because just by the pure presence that there's a Holland up front binds one or two two defenders, it opens up the space of everyone around them. So it's not an indictment on strikers, it's just a notable fact. I think the same thing goes for Lewandowski. Uh, Kylian Mbappé, honestly, for his talent, I would expect more at these big stages. In this video, I'm gonna quickly talk about the highlights. You will see the results going through. We also see the current predictions uh, who will go on according to my model, which is based on the ELO ratings that, uh, that are out there, as well as the pre-season odds for the Champions League. And always have in mind the knockout phase. And number one at the moment is, of course, Manchester City. Number two is already, these guys, Barcelona. Because they have the easier path to the final. It's really, really amazing how this Barcelona team has actually turned things around. But I want to start in London. Arsenal against Bayern Munich. A game that gave us plenty of storylines. Uh, I mean, ahead of the game, it was all about how bad Bayern are. And that Arsenal is a much better team. And I would, have, would agree with that all along. However, what always stunned me a little bit with Arsenal are the performances against Porto. Where... Uh, they are way better than Porto. And look where Porto are in, 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 in the league. But this European experience and, you know, uh, playing continental teams that are a little bit more solid at the back. And Spain were solid at the back. That's the weird, weird thing. And really dangerous in, in attack. This is not something that they see a lot in the Premier League. And it's a similar style that gave them problems prom against Porto. It's just that Bayern have better players. And it also has to be said... I don't quite un 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 understand why Arsenal were so high on David Raya. Uh, yes, statistically he was probably good for Brand, 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 but I think this was not a position that they needed to change. And it actually showed here because I think there were at least one or two situations. I mean, the first goal to me is on David, David Raya and uh, Gabriel not playing out the first goal for Bayern. But it started actually quite well. Arsenal, in the, in the world, both Tuesdays twos again were that there was the one team, the English team, with loads of possession and trying to apply pressure this way, and then the non-English team trying to absorb the pressure and hitting on, on the counter-attack with, with their speedy strikers. And this is what Tuchel got, got completely right. You had Gnabry and Sané, those are speedsters. And this is exactly what, 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 what they were working at. But 
Arsenal took to lead through soccer. It was a really nice uh, shot I have, had to say. And a few few minutes later, as I said, it was an error in, in, in the build-up where Goretzka then uh, gets the ball, plays it to Gnabry, who can make it easy, easily 1-1. One, uh, one, one. And there were a few other, other chances. There was one where Sané goes through. If he goes down, I think he was 1-1 one one with Ben White. If he decides to go down, he's the last man. <laughs> and if there's a foul, foul given, there's a red card. Uh, not the smartest thing, but the speed of Sané then came, came, came through uh, around the uh, half hour, hour mark when he was brought down in the box and Harry Kane stops up and of course scores against Arsenal as he has done for Spurs. It was also notable speaking of Spurs that there were two players, uh, three players that were booed by the Arsenal crowd uh, every single time to touch the ball. That's of course Eric Dyer and Harry Kane, but also Musiala. Is it because he decided for Germany instead of England? Uh, I found that one a little bit curious. Um, Arsenal really were shocked by going down to Bayern. I think they didn't expect it. They did not judge this Bayern team right. right. I really think so. Uh, in, the, in the second half, it was more and more of the same, but it, uh, Arsenal's attacks were kind of stale. Uh, and Bayern probably could have hit them a little bit more in the counter attack. There was a 3 1 in there, especially with the Tuchel situation where Tuchel claims should have been, been a penalty. I am of two minds. I mean, uh, it was innocent how Raya and Gaga Gabriel plays it over. Gaga Gabriel wants to have it on the outside, take, takes it up. The whistle has blown, so technically, it should, should have been offside. Uh, a penalty, not offside, but yeah, okay. Uh, it would have been a really harsh one, that's for sure, as, uh, as well. Tosa then gets an equalizer for Arsenal. Ar Ar Arsenal pull push around and Saka uh, with the last second of the game uh, is running across Neuer. Neuer is doing, doing nothing and he is dangling out of the leg. Want a penalty for me? It was not a penalty. And believe me, I wanted to see that pen penalty, but yeah. It's 2 2. It's well balanced at the moment. However, I have to say. If Bayern continue this way, I think Bayern should be considered a favorite favorites going through over Arsenal, which is something I did not expect. I really did not, 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 not expect this. But then uh, that's the only thing that Bayern have to look forward to, whereas Arsenal still have a Premier League and maybe we'll put an emphasis there. So that might explain it as well. I've talked too much about our Arsenal against Bayern. We're completely cutting the time for the game of the round. Real Madrid against Man Manchester City. What a game that was. Brilliant from A to Z. Open, everyone attacking. And yes, if you're a coach or if you're defensive minded, this was not the game for you. But if you're neutral, this was just absolutely freaking brilliant. Uh, one uh, C situation have happened early. It might have an impact. Is that Jermaine or in the first minute got a yellow card. He will be missing the return leg. There was a free kick given, uh, given where I don't know why Real Madrid decided to put just Vinny Jr. there as a semi wall or not even even wall. But now Silva CCC takes the free free kick into the near corner. There was no chance for Loon in there. Uh, it's 1 0 Manchester City. And I thought, ooh, this is gonna take an ugly turn. But the game continued exactly as probably Ancelotti had planned that uh, City will have a lot lots of possession. And we're gonna hit them on the counter. We're gonna hit them bad because we have Rodrigo with Vini Jr. And the equalizer came in the 12th minute through uh, Kamavinga. Great shot that was deflected badly by Ruben Dirsch. Uh, it's even count counted uh, on some apps as an own goal. And then two, two minutes later, Vini Jr. plays it within its own half to Rodrigo, who has a clear run, run on goal. Yes, with the ball, he's a little bit slower, so, so he has two defenders around. But the way he pokes it and then it gets deflected by Akanji into the net was actually quite a brilliant sight. So within two minutes, Real Madrid have turned around and then Real Madrid, uh, you know, the, the, the game continued this way uh, of uh, Manchester City trying to impose themselves on Real Madrid and Real Madrid poking into the big giant all, all the time. And especially at the beginning of the second half, there were two good chances by Bellingham and Vinny Jr. But it could have been 3-1. And then enter Foden. The way he hits this ball was so sweet and arguably is on the third best goal of all of them that we saw. But what a great shot that was in the 66 minute and then 5-5 five, five minute Guardiola with an almost equally great shot. Uh, for a defender on his wrong foot, 
via the inside of the cro the, the crossbar 70 for the first, first minute. Some would argue it's even better, but I really liked how Foden he had he got himself he made the he, he made the turn and then pulled it in in the corner of Guardiola. It was just a bang get it in there. Uh, and yeah, it was maybe aesthetically pleasing since it touched the underside of the crossbar as well. At that moment, you were really thinking, oh. Again, City will impose themselves because we all we all, we all agree City, City are probably the better team than Real Madrid. However, Real Madrid are dangerous, and then the best goal of the evening, arguably of the mid mid week, where Real Madrid could, could, could equalize Vinny Junior with a crawl crossing Valverde just one time. It brilliantly. It's three three, and then it's up and down. This game did not let up. This it was a brilliant watch. Um, so I'm looking forward to more. Unfortunately, the next time will be played at the, in, at the Etihad, and honestly, it will be a tough going for Real Madrid. That's what I fear. That City is just that much better at home, but it's really this should be a final. Uh, honestly, Manchester City against Real Madrid that should be the final. But yeah, but yeah, it was brilliant to watch. Yesterday, uh, let's stay in Madrid. And one of my complaints was that, uh, you know, the Tuesday games, I would have liked one of them to be uh, exchanged with a Wednesday game. Uh, just because, you know, I want to, there was Real Madrid City. Those are two better, better, better teams than ours and Bayern are the two, two, two better teams. So at least to balance it out a little bit. But when I, when I look at, at the teams involved, especially from the Spanish side, yes, two English teams play on the same day. Two German teams could play on the same day, but maybe that's not. But uh, I'm looking at the Spanish teams. You could not have uh, Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid play on the same day in Madrid. And I'm pretty sure they don't want to have Real Madrid and Barcelona playing on the same day. I think that's the reason why it's scheduled the way it was scheduled. So there you go. Uh, in any in any case, uh, Atletico Madrid against Dortmund. Atletico will rule the missed chances. I mean, uh, Dortmund defensively absolutely not good. I mean, trying to play out from from from, from, from back, uh, and the Paul in, in, intercepts him in the fourth minute. It's one nil. Uh, also the. Um, how Lino got forgotten after the Griezmann cross to make it 2-0 and there were many chances in between. Dortmund completely uns not sorted or whatever. Not being a prayer president Athletic could have killed the tie right there and then. Even in the second half and Dortmund played a little bit more uh, solid. You know, you can Brandt come on, Sebastian Alea came, came on, uh, Bino Gittens came, 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 came on, on a little bit later. Um, Dortmund was more solid in the second half, but for the longest of times it was all Atleti. It was all at, at, Atleti and if you ask, ask me, it should have been 3-0 by the 66 minutes or so. However, then that game turned suddenly in the F at the 80 minute mark uh, when Sebastian Alea just gets the ball and yanks it in. It's 2 1. And suddenly, yes, there was one chance for Atleti, but suddenly Dortmund hit twice the crossbar, first through Bino Gittens. Yes, it touched it on, uh, on, the, on, the, on the outside. I think late then Julian Brandt also hit exactly the stanchion there. Uh, it. That could have that could have been a really really lucky result for Dortmund. I actually think they really like going back with a one goal down, going to the Westfalen Stadion. That's a completely different proposition. And I have the feeling that Atletico Madrid will get a taste of their own medicine there, because that's exactly how Inter played against Atleti, and they didn't get more goals in. And so let's see how this will turn out in Dortmund. I mean, for me, that either of these sides will make it in the semi-final is a bit ludicrous. But that's the way the draw works. I, from what I've seen and from how I see these, these two teams, none of them are perfect, but I think that Atleti should be the slightly better team overall. And then we go to Paris. Uh, if you would have asked me when the draw was made, or even uh, up until a few weeks ago, even I think before the game I thought that PSG should rock Barca. Although I saw that Barca had become a lot more solid. Especially a lot more solid uh, over the last few uh, days. And then suddenly you have Frankie de Jong back. That is a game changer for Barcelona. And I think this is again, and I... <laughs> going now very locally uh, when I talked yesterday about uh, the last coach being fired. This is again the criticism on Xavi was in that sense also not quite fair. Yes, it, it did not look all that great for most, most of the time, but having all these in injuries, especially Frankie de Jong and Pedri out, that changes everything. 
I'm absolutely convinced about that and a little bit more patience with coaches is, is uh, definitely needed. Uh, the game started kind of messy, you know, no pun intended. Uh, the t two teams trying to feel each other, I mean, Mbappé with his uh, clear runs, but Mbappé was really well defended by, Bar by Barcelona and also made uh, plenty of poor decisions, if you were to ask me. Um, but then Barcelona took, took over and uh, it was the Gundogan Korkhorst that gave PSG some problem and honestly Donnarumma did not have a good evening. I blame him at least for the last goal that we'll come to but I also have, I, I think he didn't look on the good on, on the opener and he needs to come, come out more. Uh, I'm so, I'm really glad that he's not with Milan any, any, anymore because he's become a, a, a liability. And looking for the Italy squad, he's the number one goalie. Yes, he won them the Euros uh, with two penalty shooters, but I don't think that there's much. But Don Donnarumma has definitely regressed. There is no doubt in my mind about that. As I say, Barcelona, I think from the half hour mark, suddenly were more in, in the game and Xavi out coaching his, um, you know, former coach and good friend Luis Enrique. Uh, it was a funny scene when the two met uh, in the uh, hall uh, of the Park pa 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 Press uh, and Xavi wants to uh, <laughs> embrace him and lose Enrique with a big smile and <laughs> like that. But it was clear uh, they were fooling around uh, there, but uh, it, 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 it was good to see that. Uh, but yeah, Xavi, the novice coach, uh, I mean, it's clear Xavi is a new coach and Luis Enrique is the established almost superstar coach, a little bit. A little bit weird at times, but he's a superstar coach. He got outsmarted. Definitely got outsmarted. And I think putting Rafinha in was a big uh, call on his uh, side, on Xavi's side as well. And I mean, the uh, the way that the first goal happened, where Kubar C, 17-year-old defender playing like he has been doing this all his life, probably has been doing but you know much more seasoned played a great ball to Lev Lewandowski in midfield who then turn turns out opens up the play plays it out to Lamin Yamal and then an absolutely sick pass with the outside of his foot that gets intercepted a teeny bit but uh, it falls to Ra Rafinha who then clearly realizes I have to one time this however Asensio, who was the false nine, did not really work out, gets subbed off, it is Barcola, a much more dangerous player, if you were to ask me. And PSG turned the game around rather quickly. I still don't understand the Dembele goal. Honestly, I mean, there's a, the, the typical Killian run. Uh, the ball is an intercept by Araujo, uh, plays it to Dan Dembele, who Dan dances around and yanks it in. How this goes in, or, or, or whatever, I, 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 I still don't understand this goal. Uh, but it's 1-1 one, one, and of course Dembélé scores against Barcelona where he was, he has to be considered a flop. And I think part of the uh, loss to Liverpool has to come, come out of the to, to Dembélé not scoring. Uh, I still maintain that. But then uh, just three minutes later, a really nicely attacking move over Ruiz, Lancet, Vitinha, Pelpozidid, it's 2-1 PSG. At that moment, I thought now the tides are turning. Tides are turning big time. There was another big chance for Barabar Collard. Yes, Ter Stegen was there. Touches goes on, on the cross, but I think there was a little deflection there as well. Um, if that's 3-1, I think this swings PSG's favor. But then uh, Pedri had to come, come on and within a minute plays a Pedri pass to Rafinha, who one times it. Technically, I would say this is the best goal. Aesthetically, the Valverde one was better, but the pass from Petri with no speed playing such a nice ball. And then Rafinha over his shoulder, one time timing in the internet, an absolutely brilliant goal. PSG is shocked. At that moment, PSG is shocked and the game goes level again. Not only scoreline. And then Donnarumma happens. I mean, Gündogan and Korna, and he doesn't come, come, come out. Um, uh, Say so yeah, Emery is missing Christensen, and Christensen has a free header. But uh, I, I, yes, he's a young kid, blah, blah, blah. And yes, these scores need, need to be defended better, but Donnarumma has to come out. I mean, he's a giant of a goalie. This was not such an uh, important, but he's standing there, 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 there in the line. I don't know. Don, 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 Donnarumma can be really frustrating. Uh, and so the game ends with a 3-2 for Barcelona at PSG, which swings it very much towards Barcelona in my perspective. Yes, Barcelona will not have the home field advantage that they would have at the camp now. That one's for certain. However, it's 
still a um, big advantage because PSG need to open up and I think Barcelona have the right players for that. And Barcelona are feeling themselves, I think, at, at, at the moment. They're finally coming together. Yeah, Xavi has been asking them many times, will you stay, will you stay on? I think he should walk to just see that maybe come back. I think Xavi is only suited to be a Barcelona manager. I think he will be asked back in. Because, you know, they might go into the Champions League. And uh, with them now being the favorites to move on, they will be favored over whoever they play in the semifinal, be it Dortmund or Atleti. Barcelona is likely to go to the final. They could play Manchester City. There are some storylines in there. There are some storylines in there. Is that a final that Pep could throw? Because of his Barcelona? Just a thought out there. In any case, as I said, it's absolutely crazy. It was a mad two weeks of football. Uh, that made up for all the draws we saw in the round of 16 and in parts also in the groups, group stage. This best against best, yes, Dortmund against Atleti. Think we can find two better teams that should be there, uh, but all the other six I think belong there, and it will make for a really great watching. And even the Atleti Dortmund game was not all that bad. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on the Champions League. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.